80% of the time, a ship is within 200 miles of the coast. So 80% of the environmental damage that is done as a result of their <coughs> emissions is around population centers. It's, it's very, very significant, therefore, that we try to reduce those emissions, um, not only as they get closer to the shore, but when they, they are, in fact, in near shore environments. We're fortunate also that we have international standards. There was what's called the IMO uh, Annex 6 that was, was put in place at an international level. Before that was in place, two ports really had a struggle and had a challenge. How are we going to address uh, cleaning up the vessels that call our ports? Uh, and there's a legacy fleet, and there's going to be new, just like you have new cars and everything else, and things change over time. There's a legacy fleet. These are assets that you know these customers are not just going to go and and trade in. They don't have that type of ability in the market and they have to get a rate of return on their investment. And so we're fortunate that at an international level that we're going to see cleaner and newer ships with standards internationally. As we've seen, regulations to regulate pollution and reduce emissions started in the 70s with automobiles, we've moved into trucks and buses, and now, it's kind of the crosshairs of the industry are on the maritime marketplace. And regulations are becoming more and more stringent, and solutions are now coming into the marketplace that can help us handle the challenges that we face. This is an international business that we're in. All of us who participate in the port activities, uh, whether it's here in California or around the world, know that we're in an internationally based business. The, the, the ports of call around the world are now all being affected. And as many of you know, uh, in January of 2012, an emissions control area was established around the entire coastline of North America, which extends out 200 nautical miles. So that means that as any vessel over 500 tons coming into that area must now comply with the regulations. But guess what? We also have in California the state that has a 24 nautical mile limit for its set of regulations. So now we've got uh, uh, factors which impact all of us who are participating in this. So what we've done is that we focused on our products on those regulations where they intersect, which is right there at that particular ISO test protocol to provide that solution for uh, verifying and certifying these new technologies. Our parent company is Harley Marine, based out of Seattle, um, and like you're saying, we're an extremely forward-thinking, environmentally conscious company, the most environmentally conscious com tugboat company I've ever worked for. We do have three of the only tugboats with Tier 3 engines, main engines, on the West Coast right now. Um, the Robert Franco, the Aubrey Franco, and the, uh, uh, the John Quigg. Uh, the rest, everything we're building is all Tier 3 minimum on where, where we're putting it, and all the new bills that are coming to California, obviously, tier three. Minimum of four tugs at any given time in the harbor, sometimes up to six or seven, and seven or eight barges. Clean oil, uh, black oil, and we're get, beginning to get into diesel transportation. We talked about the vessel speed reduction uh, program. This is a nice graphic that I like to use. Um, it shows the overwater boundary of our 20 and 40 nautical mile boundaries. The, uh, here is the 20 and 40. And then this is the overwater boundary that, uh, that the South Coast Air Quality Management District uses to uh, they collect emission, uh, any emissions over that uh, boundary. So our emissions inventories also, um, we track emissions um, for any vessels that come into that boundary as well. So over on the right-hand side is uh, Long Beach's overwater boundary as well. No, it's the same. It's a corny joke. Um, we mentioned the carb zone, and um, this, is, this is the 24 nautical mile carb boundary. So this is kind of a nice all-encompassing graphic. Um, so that is, that is one incentive program that we have. It's been around since 2001, and both ports have high participation uh, in, in those programs. The next one is the Environmental Ship Index Program. It's, a, it's been around since 2011. It's an international clean shipping index program. 
uh, developed under uh, the auspices of IAPH WPCI. It's the International Association of Ports and Harbors World Ports Climate Initiative. The Port of Los Angeles adopted the program in, in July of 2012. Um, the idea is ESI is a, is a formula-based calculation um, using IMO regulations as, as baselines for the formula. And as, as vessels score uh, better than, or they, they are in advance, the vessels are in advance of IMO regulations, they accrue points. And it's based on NOx, SOx, and CO2. To date, there's 23 incentive providers. Uh, that include three in North America, one in Asia, two in the Middle East, 15 in Europe, and then there's two classification groups, um, Green Award and Right Ship. Uh, and there's over 2,500 vessels enrolled in ESI. The reason that, that we are now concentrating on, on ocean-going vessels is that ocean-going vessels, according to a study that was done uh, approximately 20 years ago, is, are responsible for 2% of all the CO2 that is emitted, think about that, is 50,000 ships basically are putting out 2% of all the CO2. They are responsible for over 30% of all the NOx, and they're responsible for approximately 9% of all the SOx. Please thank the panel again.